Our next honoree is a really good friend of mine. And that should make it easy. But all of a sudden, it's not very easy. And I won't tear up this to make a political statement, but, <laughs> but I feel like I should. Um, let me start the story this way. Let me start with the name. Fatema Kudiran. Fatema was the captain of a robotics team from Afghanistan, from Herat, Afghanistan. So picture six or seven 15-year-old girls, 15, 16, that are competing to get into the global robotics competition in Washington, D.C. in 2017. Fatema was the captain. She assembled the team. She trained the team. She disciplined the team. And they actually got accepted into that competition in Washington, D.C. Their lives were starting to change. Our honoree today paved the path, worked with the administration under the so-called Muslim ban, to trying to find a way to bring these young girls over to the United States. And you know, that in itself is a story. But it's not a political story. Um, the girls came, and they want to come because they want to show what they got. They want to come because they want to play with all the other competitors. It's a life experience. Uh, they won a silver prize. They were uh, in demand all around the United States for meet and greets and speaking engagements. Our nominee tonight was uh, along with them to mentor them, to keep them in line, and to probably teach a few life lessons along the way. They were interviewed by CNN, BBC, and a lot of media outlets. That arc, that story arc, at that point in these young girls' lives is phenomenal. Fatema, the captain, when the team came back to Herat, learned that her father died. So while she was on a great journey, her father was killed in the hands of ISIS in Afghanistan. Of course, Fatima's elation turned into shattering grief. The Dreamer's Journey, the Dreamers were the name of the team. Their journey, Fatima's journey, is a reminder that technology and innovation and digital is still a human endeavor. Still very human. So we've celebrated our visionaries this evening. We're grateful to honor and hear from Roya Maboub. She is a really good friend of mine. And for these girls, Roya repress, represents a heroic figure. Roya represents a glimpse of these girls' future. But of course, Roya was one of these girls. I'm not allowed to say how many years ago, but some years ago. <laughs> a younger Roya experienced the internet for the first time in Afghanistan. That access gave her a view into an exciting new world, a world that goes beyond the veil of a very traditional society, of a very oppressive regime under Taliban control. And that view activated 
Roya internally. Roya was able to discover new aspects of herself, new potentialities, her aspirations, her vision, her education. And that was a turning point for an entire wave of change that we are seeing in that part of the world. Roya is time 100. She's a Tribeca disruptor, where we got to know each other. She's a founder of a digital, digital service, uh, sorry, Digital Citizen Foundation. She's also a founder of a number of STEM-focused schools for girls in Afghanistan and Mexico. She's a board member of a U.S. university. We're honored to have her as advisor to our Horizon 3 venture capital. So many accolades, but on a personal level, those accolades don't even begin to represent what she represents for me. To me, Roya's story, the dreamer's story, Fatima's story, represents the profound nexus of powerful forces at play in today's digital world. At this nexus, the entirety of a girl's life is in the balance. This is a place where fear and excitement reconcile. Reconciles to ignite a young girl's soul. This is where suppression and adventure play out cloak and dagger scenes in the streets and homes in Kandahar. This is a place where a traditional society clutches for the status quo in a river of change and transformation. It's where technology, STEM education, innovation is suddenly a rook on a massive geopolitical chessboard. Today, Roy is building an innovation center for Af Afghanis, Afghani innovators and pioneers of the future. The center has geopolitical implications. It represents an anchor point into the future. A future where more girls and boys self-actualize to ignite their gifts. It provides a toehold for the Afghan society to move forward and not backwards. The US is withdrawing from Afghanistan. The Taliban is at the negotiating table. We need more chips on the table to move that society forward. And Roya represents one of those chips with this Center for Education and Innovation. The incoming regime could easily roll back the progress over these last 20 years, closing that veil that Roya pierced when she was that young little girl. Roy is truly a visionary and triumphantly so every single day at this nexus. Silicon Valley, you, we, are indirectly creating that future with all of our razzle-dazzle, sometimes spurious innovations, but sometimes our creations need to meet the concrete, and that concrete needs to invite those young souls to express themselves. I'm hoping we can help this get the center off the ground. So with that, please welcome my dear friend, Roya Maboub. Thank you very much, Jatender, for your kind introduction and your support. 
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. What a privilege it's, it's for me to be one of the honorary for this gala. I am dif deeply grateful for the consideration of the Silicon Valley Forum for this recognition. I have to fix this first. An inspiration and ingenuity come in most unlucky places. Those who are writing off by the system are discredited as a source of possibility, maybe the very one who have a way to bring the peace to the world or end to poverty. The mind of a child is a source of unlimited potential that waits only to be given tools and guidance to shape and form it into a great scientist, mathematician, or artist. I could have been nameless, unknown woman in Afghanistan. The courageous men and women who are here today, who lead and dare to dream of a brighter future, could have been unknown just so the world leaders of the future may still be unknown. As a girl growing up in Herat, Afghanistan, I lived in a fear, fear of the Taliban who come and burn our books, fear, unknown, fear of unknown future, fear of never escaping the colorless, fear of writing life that was all I knew. I lived in a fear, but hope born in my heart. I dreamed of a devices where I could read whatever I wanted, and then make those books to be disappear. In my mind, this would prevent anyone ever keeping me from the knowledge for which I was so desperately hungered. I crowd a world that was deeper, richer, and full of exciting things to be learned and experienced. My hunger gave me courage to go to where that others wouldn't, wouldn't go. This courage led me to go to only in the cafe in Herat, that where I was introduced to this magic box that people called computer. From that moment, I made the technology to be center of my career. Technology was how I knew my world could be changed. My sole education was that opened the door of opportunities and success. I started my, my software development company in 2010. The company grew quickly, and I hired many women as programmers and bloggers, and becoming the first female tech CEO in Afghanistan. My, my success fueled my desire to empower other young women to becoming leaders and gain confidence and knowledge in a world that wanted to keep them in dark. I saw digital some fun with one goal and one dream. The goal is to see that technology is an accessible option for everyone. The dream was that everyone, even those who are living in conservative countries, would have the same opportunity and education available for them, regardless of their background and gender or social status. I mean, today it might seem a big goal, but if we do not have courage to lead the way and fight for something different, nothing will be ever change. When we are willing to stand up for a different future for women and children around the world, we will find that we have the power to do what is necessary to affect those changes. Today, Digital Sim Fund has trained more than 15,000 of the women in Afghanistan, and more than 100 of them have become entrepreneur themselves, taking their lives into their own hands and helping others, women and girls, lead a life of choice and never before imagined possibilities. In 2017, a nonprofit organization called First Global asked us to put together a robotic team to, to take part in First Global Challenge, an international competition for teenagers. This is how the Afghan dreamers. Afghanistan first all girls robotic team began. Six students selected from 115 students who applied for the exam. Even thought that their visa application were rejected twice. The Afghan dream, dreamers eventually traveled to the United States to participate in the first global challenge. Tasked with building their own robot for the computation, they captivated the public with their inspiring message of determination and hope. They eventually received a medal for courage achievement. They prove that after years of dark darkness and subjection, Afghan girls across the country can finally take charge and aspire to be master of their own destiny. This is the power of our youths. Their courage against the backdrop of the personal national tragedies has in infection power to install hope. As reward for the Afghan dreamers' effort to advance women's participation in the field of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, the Afghanistan government donated six acres of land at Kabul University. This is where the Afghan Dreamer Institute, based on the design provided by Yale University of Architecture, will one day be located. 
This is an institute will offer the same education to high school and university students with emphasis on artificial intelligence, blockchain, cybersecurity, and robotics. This model of education and prosperity will allow young women to succeed in the business and support their families and communities. Already we have seen enormous progress in front with our IT centers and digital literacy program, Digital Sum Fund. Every day, young women are learning how to manage their finance, writing the codes, create a new technology, and follow their dreams and passion. Initiatives like this embody the vision of self-sustaining economic growth that Afghanistan needs. Our children are our country's future leaders and innovators, and they deserve full support and investment of their nation. Education is engine for regional development, peace, and prosperity, but it must be quality education that is shaped for the future. Simply, promoting the ways of the past will breed an Afghanistan that mirrors the past one that, that the world has left behind. Technology and education is some, like provided a new Dreamer Institute, will allow young girls and boys to be trained in high quality, cutting edge technology and media. They will compete on the world stage for development of the world changing innovation and progress. System wide investment in education at secondary and higher level education shape a trajectory for job creation, economics, progress and unlimitedly more inclusive and peaceful societies. This is what Afghanistan needs most. Not more war, not the past repeated, a new vision, a new hope. But hope that is not realized only crash the dreamers. It is a vision that is pursued, the education that is learned, that changed the lives. One young person, one young woman, one family, one community at a time, we are changing, and we will change the future of Afghanistan and the world. Thank you.